One, two, three. <laughs> and go. <laughs> go. Welcome back. It is Thursday at 3 o'clock. George and I are here. It's live at Epifan, number, yeah. episode number 109. 109. 109. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm like way behind here. <laughs> Yeah. Zoom. All right. Zoom. Live at Epifan. Live at Epifan. I, like, I still like that. I like that you black like that? one. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah. It's kind of I think fun. it needs to be black. <laughs> yeah, well. Sorry. That was a conversation before, guys. Uh, laughing yeah, I'll get something right from on before. It. Let me update it while we yeah. do the show. Uh, today we're talking about how to get the most out of live streaming events. Yes. This is a big topic to unpack. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're going to break it down to some few core elements. That's right. And we got our sheets double-sided today. I know, right? A lot. Like, I think it's uh, size 8 font on Seriously, there, so I it's, need my it's reading glasses. <laughs> um, I don't need reading glasses. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot on here, so we're, we're going to get to that. Mm -hmm. um, but, of course, as always, you know, throw your questions in the chat as we go along, and we will do our best to address that. I um, already saw a few uh, few folks yeah. loitering in the in the lobby we out did. there. Yeah, we did. So uh, we have Linda Boonstra in there a few minutes ago. Fixed Assets, David Larson Photo, Tim Trot Productions, uh, Rosenbauer America. How, uh, hello from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Wow, Rosenbauer America. Interesting. And uh, of course, Tim is watching. Tim and I were yeah. chatting on the phone earlier. He was oh, on the road. He yeah. thought he wasn't going to make it to watch the show. Special but VIP access. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I called him, made sure. Tim, are you going to watch today? Uh, yeah. Need to get our numbers up. Yeah. Stefan's in the chat there as well. Hi, Stefan, as usual. Thanks Linda's for joining us. Linda's using the right term for what she was doing. It is lurking. <laughs> lurking, yes. Is lurking. Exactly. Yeah. And Stefan, is that a typo or is that how you say hello? It's. Well, that's a German Germany. hello. It's Germany. Yeah. Yeah. The German that's three fun. and the German hello. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. We also so. have uh, Ken Benedict. Ah, Ken Benedict. Oh, there, nice. just clear oh that's on the Facebook clear side. Clear. I got to flip back and forth, you oh, see. Oh, Facebook folks. Yeah, Facebook guys. Yeah. So, hey, Ken, how are you? Well, Welcome. and soon enough, we're going to have a third place to watch Faithful. for comments. So, uh -oh. yeah, we're not going to get too much into yeah, that. But that's a whole other episode. Yeah, that's a whole, yeah, uh, literally whole a whole other, other episode. episode. Big one. Uh, we also have John, uh, John Gord Media from the UK, uh, Brian Jones, and uh, Faithful Mess. Hey, guys. <laughs> and, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there. Who won the quiz last week? Thank you for the reminder, fixed assets. The judges are still tallying the votes. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot In to other words, that. they and cheated uh, <laughs> and didn't count half of my answers. Fixed assets, do you feel that you had the most correct answers? Because if you did, <laughs> maybe we'll just give it to you. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the jury's still out on that one. Thanks for the reminder, and I will uh, make sure to get that done for next week's episode. Danny Grizzle, greetings from the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains in North Georgia. I am jealous right now, mm -hmm. Danny. I would rather be there than here. Grizzle uh, is the best <laughs> name for someone that lives in, yeah, a, in, in a, a mountain. Mountains. Yeah, in the yeah, mountains. Yeah, for yeah, sure. So. Yeah, all right. So, what should we hit first? Well, as usual, I think we should start with the news. Well, before we do that, actually. Oh, no, no, hey, yeah. I wanted to give a big shout out, or we wanted to give a big shout out to, uh, we got this awesome fan letter from a viewer. Uh, Neil, thank you so much mm. for your letter. It was awesome. Really appreciated it. Uh, we're going to get back to you very shortly. <laughs> we're not ignoring you. Uh, we're just trying to decide what sort of special response we might want to yeah. uh, give you. But we really appreciated that email. It was, it was fantastic. It got shared around a lot of people in the office, and, and it, and it uh, was very touching. So appreciate that. It was very nice. Lisa's doing this. Uh, I guess she wasn't on the email string. Uh, you know. So we'll make sure to forward that to Lisa. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but it was very nice. Oftentimes, the notes that the customer service yeah. guys get aren't, aren't the nicest sometimes. They're usually pretty good. They're usually pretty good, yeah. yeah. I'm going to walk um, that back. We do get a lot of compliments, but, uh, you know, as the internet usually is, you usually only hear from people when they're pissed, yeah, not exactly. when they're happy. Exactly, so uh, that was a nice change so, of pace for sure. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, oh, there we go. Rosenbauer America is Neil. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. sweet. There we go. That's me, Neil. Perfect. Nice. Awesome. That's me. Um, so we're going to get back to you on that, Neil, um, and uh, we're going to we're going to uh, chat with you about some stuff. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that uh, coming soon. Uh, what was the other thing on here? I guess the news. Yeah. Now we can actually get into the news. Yeah. Should have been actually reading the thing that we I know. That I typed out. That would have been a smart idea. Typing. <laughs> All right. So you brought uh, you brought some news to my attention this week. Yeah. It's kind of a cool announcement from uh, one of our 
at one of our friends in the restreaming world. So why don't yeah. you tell us about that? So Restream.io, um, which we don't currently have any interaction with. Well, they're, they're than, friends, like a close Yeah, we, we chat yeah. with them all the time, and, and we have pitched them ideas about working closer together, and hopefully that, that happens someday. Um, but they had some updates today that was uh, very cool, mm -hmm. and they're rolling out um, Facebook Live for free, um, and I think what actually happened here is they've worked out a way to leverage the Facebook API better than they used to. Okay. Um, because of the way the TOS for Facebook Live used to work, a lot of restreaming services. That's terms of service for yeah, you. If, if you were using YouTube. On acronyms. Yeah, if you were using YouTube and Facebook at the same time, you technically couldn't buy the API mm -hmm. TOS for Facebook, and so you would do Facebook by using custom RTMP. Restream.io used to charge extra to do a custom RTMP instead of APIs. Oh, okay. They've now changed that so they're, it's now free as part of their base package, which is a paid package, but it's now included without an extra add-on to do Facebook Live from Restream.io. So people who are looking for a nice, easy, simple way to do uh, restreaming, Restream.io is a good service does not integrate with Webcaster X2 for all of you watching, because I know that question is going to pop up in chat any second. Um, we yeah, where's, have, where's the icon we have on switch, my Webcaster? We have Switchboard Live uh, for doing that, and they're pretty much exactly the same thing, to be honest. So, um, But Restream, they're, uh, they're great. Um, they also added something in there. I even have to look at my own notes. Uh, <laughs> they also added, I noticed while I was checking out this new feature, um, webcam streaming in the browser. So YouTube does this as well, but what it means is you don't need, if you're only using a single input, you're not really doing any mixing and switching on the computer, you can run a live stream from your webcam built in, or maybe something like an AVIO capture card right. in your browser without OBS or Wirecast or all of that junk. If, if you, you can bring it in as a UAVC device, Yeah, right? exactly. If you bring yeah. it in through a capture card that behaves like a webcam, you can do it straight in the browser. Mm -hmm. Big advantage there is a lot of our viewers uh, will use video mixers and switchers externally anyways. You could run the output of that into a capture card and run everything in a browser. Cool. Usually the browser weighs a little lighter weight than say OBS or Wirecast or something like that. So Unless you're using Chrome, but uh, yeah. you know, you know, even then it Chrome's still a is. Bit of a pig, but um, it's still gonna so, be less than OBS and another yeah. dedicated app. So it's cool. That. The restreams added some new uh, some new stuff in there. Yeah, so, that's very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get into this interesting story. I like <laughs> you this love one. This one. This one. Thai man. That's kind of like Florida man. <laughs> so uh, not quite as bad. Yeah, not quite as bad. But this guy is actually getting in a little bit of trouble. So uh, read in the news earlier this week, there was a uh, vlogger out of Thailand, and he was on a flight. I'm not sure where he was flying to and from, but uh, he was on a Thai Air flight, and he decided, I'm going to live stream this takeoff, and I'm just going to totally ignore all the rules regarding going to airplane mode and not having a device <laughs> turned on, and and his uh, view were begging him. They said, "You gotta, you gotta stop the stream. You gotta get off." And he's typing on there. I don't care about the rules. Yeah. And like, you know, this is public record, right? All of these comments you're putting down on the internet. So he went from facing a, a, a fairly smaller fine to now Something having the book thrown at him. Yeah. So he's looking at about five years jail time <laughs> and about uh, six thousand dollars U.S. in fines on top of that. So kind of, and all for what? Yeah, well, he got a pretty good stream of the takeoff. I couldn't uh, find that actual video. I mean, I guess, but unfortunately, but uh, he's got a little street cred, and you know, he's yeah. going to be the tough guy in the yeah, tough uh, guy tough in the guy prison in the yard. Yeah. yard. Well, what, what are you, you in for? Yeah. Live streaming the takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, better I'm better get live this stream. guy. Yeah, no, that's, that's uh, uh, yeah, that, that was pretty funny. So keep your phones off during takeoff, and if you do yeah. want to live stream it, ask the captain. He'll probably be chill with it. Yeah, exactly. Because as we know, it really doesn't affect the airplane at all. That was on a Exactly. This is maybe one of those instances where it's better to ask <laughs> in <laughs> up in front. Because yeah. there's that saying, you know, it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. But I think in this case, it's better to ask permission. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that, that's a good one. Definitely better um, to ask permission. But sort of tying into our next news piece that ties into, I guess, our topic today mm -hmm. is big live streaming events mostly concerts that we saw in 2019. Mm -hmm. There were some big ones. Um, so, Well, even in the last couple of months. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one that I personally enjoyed was the Red Hot Chili Peppers in Egypt. We mentioned mm -hmm. that during our new yep. segment back. Yeah, we talked was. about that one. That, um, was, that was a big one. It was. And they had a pretty, they had a really good engagement on yeah. it. Nothing compared to this past no. weekend. So though. they got about 1.6 million concurrent mm -hmm. live viewers during that stream, which is good. 
It's not like, you know, earth shattering or record breaking. Nothing compared to our view. But that's, house, you know, 1.6 million people who actually like real music, mm -hmm. unlike the next one. <laughs> uh, so, of course, George is referring to Coachella, who absolutely shattered the records <laughs> at almost 90 million views, coming in at 89.2 million views over the weekend. Yeah, which now, is crazy. That is absolutely insane. And there was only about 70 bands that participated in this, which is yeah. a small kind of fraction of the amount of bands that were performing. But 90 million views. Now, compared to when they started doing the streaming in yeah. 2011, that's 90% more than what they had back then. But and I think all of streaming <laughs> has yeah, well, increased 90% that's okay, that's, that's probably in the point. past eight years. Um, yeah, I like this graphic because it really sums up Coachella. Uh, Coachella, yeah. yeah. And why <laughs> now, um, I dislike it. And why you would dislike it. You're yeah, not going to exactly. wear your, your cultural appropriation yeah, no, headband no, thanks. I'll pass on that. The, uh, head down to the concert. Yeah. No, like I said, I prefer real music. Yeah, <laughs> the, so. um, the YouTube channel is actually really cool. Uh, George Birchall and I were taking a look at it, and they had this whole embedded playlist thing going okay. on, and cool. they were streaming they were restreaming that flow right. and you could tune in at the different times on a right. different day so you okay. could watch it in like real time but it was obviously like whatever day you tuned into uh, and you could okay. see what bands there were and, and you could search for a specific band and look for that on there but aside from the actual live streaming they had a really cool embedded bit on the platform too. Nice. So that's big. So if you guys are looking to break records you're talking 100 million now. That's look, at that, look at that. Oh, we lost them. Uh, that's okay. We're totally fine with that. <laughs> we don't need that. All right, so let's let's get into the topic. So yeah. again, we're talking about how to get the most out of live streaming your events. Exactly. So what we're going to do is so we're going to... you want to get to 100 million viewers. <laughs> that's right. Live, concurrently. Uh, <laughs> well, and it could be here, for your next your here, next uh, concert event. It could be for yeah. if you're doing a church sermon. Maybe well, you're doing like a town hall. Just the chat here between uh, all of our viewers talking about the various different things that... Uh, that they cover are some great examples, right? right so let's throw them up. Um, you know, you had, uh, let's see, oh, it's, it's just constantly going here. Uh, but Tim talking about doing, you know, um, weddings and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, he's also done conventions and funerals. Um, so there's a bunch of different things in there that are sometimes smaller events, but they're fairly um, significant, right? It's. Uh, have you seen the ExploreNet commercial where it's the live stream of the wedding? Yes. So yeah. the the mother, she's not able to attend the wedding. It's obviously yeah. a recreation. It's not like yeah. what actually happened. No, I would never live stream on ExploreNet. No. <laughs> <laughs> no chill. No chill from George. But the example is good. You have someone that can't, can't attend the event, so you're going to set up a live stream. They'll be able yeah. to tune in. They can watch it. If you have a funeral that might be overseas, it's an yeah. opportunity that you can get so involved in that and not actually have to travel if you can't for you know work purposes. or it's, yeah. You can't just we, drop everything across We actually and fly have, across through one of our partners in the EU, we actually have a chain of funeral parlors in okay. Europe that use Epifan products to do exactly that. They have permanent infrastructure mm -hmm. for doing live streams of this stuff. And it seems to be a bigger thing over there than it is here, but just uh, you know, through, through my own family experience very recently, the difference is <laughs> regionally of how people like to do funerals versus ceremonies of remembrance versus mm. celebrations of life. Or, very different. So there's places and times where it works and it doesn't in others. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, there's a lot of good things in there. Um, yeah, people just throwing things in here. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, oh, I, I'm getting lost in the chat here. <laughs> uh, I was sick the first half of this week, guys. So I'm still confused. I don't know what's happening. Uh, <laughs> but what's a what's a bar camp? Actually, that'd be. Ooh, that'd be interesting. Stefan, you got to start charging, is, man. Yeah, you're you're a talented what guy. What is this? Start, uh, start, yeah. start pulling I don't, down We don't like to see this, this pro work. bono yeah, stuff. Yeah, when you, when you reach 100 million viewers, you can't be doing it pro bono. Mm -hmm. you know, you got to charge some bucks. Uh, the company actually did the Red Hot Chili Peppers one. That was a relatively small U.S.-based company. They sent like 10 guys to run that yeah, show. It was a small crew. And it, they, they nailed it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... You know, it doesn't take a lot to, to get One, we'll, we'll get into some of the tools yeah. required, and obviously we're going to get into our subject, but having a big crew nowadays, not always totally necessary. No. Right? Remotely operated cameras, gimbals, cranes, all kinds of stuff that you can use. But yeah. let's, let's, let's talk start about the... Number one. Number one. So number, number one, one, you want to determine your streaming destination. Yes. So the things there to consider, obviously, are, you know, are you having viewers directly connect to your site individually? Mm -hmm. By the way, it's generally a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> Because oh, yeah, it'll eat up your bandwidth exactly. on your server side, right? Or are you publishing the stream to a server for redistribution? 
restreaming it potentially from there. Um, and then, of course, you know, deciding on those platforms, whether that's the Facebook, the YouTube, Twitter, uh, you know, Ustream, Vimeo, whatever, whatever, right? It's endless. Right? Amazon, it's, it's endless in that, in that regard. And then if you are sending that single stream out to a service that's redistributing it, that's easy. Usually a cost involved. Yep. If you're sending it to multiple social media platforms at the same time, then you start got to do some math. Yep. And so there's a few things in there that we can look at. Bandwidth, as you guys know, we've probably beaten this dead horse a million times, but bandwidth is everything. Um, whether you're doing multiple streams to destinations at the same time, or whether it's a single one to a restreaming service like Restream.io or Switchboard Live or StreamShark, any of those guys. So what do you need to calculate for that? Well, there's a bunch. Oh, sorry, I thought you were asking me. Yeah, well, as I, I, was, I was, as I was I getting can. it ready. Have you done the math? <laughs> <laughs> now, math and me, we're not great friends, but um, George has a really useful formula, and it's pretty easy to remember. Yeah. So we like to take the total amount of video bit rate, the total amount of audio bit rate, you take that, times together. it by, or yeah, so you add those together, times it by 1.5 or 2 if you're going to be really conservative. You want to be super it, safe is, like yeah, I do, times which 2. Which is very smart. And then that's your required bandwidth. That's the minimum upload speed you mm -hmm. need. But sometimes you have to add extra calculations to that. Um, so first of all, what bit rate should you be choosing? Well, that becomes, are you streaming at 720 or 1080, right? And that comes down to platform choices. Mm -hmm. If you're doing Facebook and you know you're going to have limited bandwidth, it's probably easier. You're going to do 720. Yeah, your resolution so is limited on exactly. Facebook. The and then lower of the resolution, the lower the bit rate you can get away mm -hmm. with. YouTube, you can be going all the way up to 4K. So yeah. 4K, you're going to have to have a lot of Massive. bandwidth. That was like 20, Massive. that's not 25, well, was it? Or what was That's uh, the recommended right. bit rate <laughs> oh, okay, for okay. 4K. Your minimum is 15 megabit. And you know when you start talking 15 to 25 megabit, for your bit rate times mm -hmm. two, that's a that's a lot of bandwidth you yeah. need. The other well, calculation. That's where restreaming services really start to shine, right? Because they take over all that bandwidth exactly. in the back end. They've got fiber connections going but even right just into that a pipeline. One link, I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's big. The other thing you might need to look at if you're trying to attempt to do it on LTE, for example, is if you're buying data, how much data is that going to cost you? And so we had, um, so there's a couple things. First, for that calculation, we had a blog that we published, oh, forever ago. Um, we'll make sure that we put that link into chat, hopefully. Oh, yeah, we will. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll toss the link into <laughs> chat. In that was our um, we have a live blog streaming, post, yeah, from uh, a long time ago that, that Jordan wrote. Mm -hmm. The other one, actually, a, a partner of ours in the UK um, put up a fairly handy calculator that doesn't tell you your upload speed that you need, but it'll tell you how much data you're going to consume. That's smart. And so you can enter your bit rate you're using and how long you expect the event to be, and it'll tell you how much data you're going to consume for that particular event. That can, very, can be very useful if you're using cellular data because if you're saying, I'm going to go in and maybe pre-buy 5 gig of data, well, how much can you stream on 5 gig? It's mm -hmm. not much. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, and You're going to be kicking yourself after the first well, five exactly. minutes. Back in February at ISE, when George and I ran the show from the hotel room, and I tethered to my phone for that, I blew through my data cap like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, of course, I had to pay overage for that, mm -hmm. right? So you got to realize if you're paying for a capped bandwidth, potentially, and that does happen, do the math, calculate what you might actually need for the event you are expecting. And it looks like we have that uh, we have that calculator up there, or we have that blog post up there. Yeah, perfect. So please, yeah, conveniently locate it underneath the other title. The other thing Oops. I would point to, there was one other than the link that I used, and this comes from our partner and friends at Switchboard Live, who actually had a guest blog post from uh, some other friends at Docast, which is a CDN. They do restreaming and hosting and stuff mm -hmm. like that, uh, very much like a Switchboard uh, or even uh, um, a StreamShark. Um, and they did one that's actually kind of copying today's format in a way, but they did a, um, you know, golden rules for a successful live stream. And the very first one is exactly the same thing of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that post uh, had some good tips and tricks that were essentially saying the exact same things here. Uh, but that's also a very well-written 
blog post that I would recommend people check out. Well, and uh, these are all for really the golden concrete. rules. Well, yeah, and these are concrete rules. There's no yeah. hacking. There's no getting around it. Exactly. You will need a certain amount of bandwidth. We talked about pipes yes. before. The pipe is only so big, and you're only going to get so exactly. much through it. And there's no tips and tricks to, no. to doing that, especially when it's live streaming, because you're not going to no. be encoding in the same there's way that you would There's ways to make that post. pipe bigger, but that's a matter of mm -hmm. money. So again, that's a decision to make. If you're a guy like Stefan doing it pro bono, you know, probably spending that extra to have a whole bunch of extra services, bonding a whole bunch of things together is probably not realistic. But if you're charging for the service that you're providing, you could build that cost in if you want. Um, right. and, and hopefully that works. So, but bandwidth, again, we're beating that one repeatedly and I think you guys know that pretty well. <laughs> totally, and, and that leads us into our next, uh, our next point. So surveying the venue, because yeah. the first thing you're going to look when you get to the venue, what is my access? So yeah. do I have local internet access at the venue? Can I get ethernet? Yeah, is can it I get stuck ethernet? on Wi-Fi? If I'm going to use Wi-Fi, terrible idea. Can I use cellular as a backup? What's the signal like? And, and we do that when we get to trade shows. We take out our little LTE hotspots. We walk around a bit. We see how many bars. We unplug and plug in our external antennas on mm -hmm. it. See how much we're boosting. Run repeated speed tests figure out where we might have the best location to safely get a good signal. Well, and the, and the speed test is going to be great when you're alone in the venue at 6 p.m. Yeah. doing setup and it's nothing but forklift drivers going around. But when everybody's there and they're all on their phones, it's going to be a different... And everyone totally turns, different on their wi -Fi. And everybody turns on their Wi-Fi. Everybody turns on their Wi-Fi. It turns into a disaster. Exactly. And you might get to that venue and find that they have Wi-Fi yeah. or Ethernet, but it's locked down. And they've exactly. got you in a DMZ and you've got like one megabyte well, up and five Super down. great exhibitor Wi-Fi that yeah, costs yeah. like... Five fifty dollars a day and is terrible. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to mess with that. No. Um, so figuring out what there is ahead of time. If you're buying internet from the venue, obviously make sure that what they say they're selling you. And we've run into this before, where we say we're buying ten meg synchronous, and we end up with far less. When you test it on site, make sure you go yell at someone if you're not getting what you're paying for, because you're paying a high fee for that. Um, so make sure you know your contacts as you're as you're going through all of this. And uh, uh, Rosenbauer America, try 37,000 cell phones in one building. Exactly. Right. So obviously you've got some experience there. Maybe uh, share a little bit more about that. You were at a venue at an event. Uh, if it was impacting your ability to well, stream, I mean, just NA NAB has what 80,000 uh, you know attendees, mm -hmm. and they're all in a relatively small area. Yeah. Uh, and everyone has a phone or two. The population <laughs> goes up by 150,000 exactly. in Las Vegas yeah. at that time. Um, now, um, just as important as your capa uh, capacity to stream, yes. how are you going to get power? Right. right? Exactly. So, are there plugins? Are you going to need to bring like a battery system? If you're traveling run internationally. A generator. Right, yeah. Make sure you have adapters for mm -hmm. everything and everything. extras. The number of adapters I've lost to other colleagues named George uh, when we've been on the road uh, <laughs> is starting to grow. Yeah. So, you know, make sure you have backups for everything. Extra cables, extra power, extra everything. Yeah. So again, knowing the venue. And one of the things you want to look at is physical positioning in that venue. Mm -hmm. Where can you set up your control booth? Yeah, the command center, the mission yeah. mission operation where you're going to have exactly. your switcher. Yeah. You're have your mixer. Exactly. You're going to have, have, have your control have board things. here. Needs to be close to power. Needs to be close to network access. Mm -hmm. If you're using any wireless technologies, that it's as clean as possible. Um, so, yeah, there's there's going to be some some good stuff there. Totally. And on top of that, too, you might find that, hey, we've got the best little mission room in the back. It's closed off. It's quiet. You know, we've got all our power, all of our ports. But you're like a thousand feet away from the main stage. Exactly. How are you going to run a cable all the way? Right. right? So cable limitations, mm -hmm. right? And that plus starts leads us into the video side. Totally. Um, SDI cables are great. You can run those hundreds of meters generally pretty safely. But you might not be using a device, whether the camera or the encoder, with SDI. Mm -hmm. um, if that's the case, HDMI is really pretty short. I mean, off-the-shelf cables max out at about 50 feet. Yep. You can get to 100, 150 feet when you start spending that money yep. and getting fiber-based cables and things like that. And, and that's we what have we the, do. We have those awesome fiber cables. They're like 100 feet long, right? 
We have yeah, we have some seventy fives and some hundreds, and they're but, great. But those are like two hundred dollars a piece. Like, yeah. let's not be fooling anyone. To get a good quality cable like that, you're spending dollars. Yeah. That's why uh, you saw me so. cringing at NAB when we were pulling the cables up from the floor, and it's the fiber cables. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> right, because they are fiber. They're glass. Don't put this glass <laughs> you in can't there. kink Don't do that. that. It's not, not the a other cable. quick note about fiber cables: they're directional. Make oh, sure you okay. got them the right way around. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Virtual always jumps in with, "Did you check the plug?" Did you? Like, yeah. Yes, because it's. Check the plug. It's right um, on the, it's right But on then, the of course, the next things are the cameras themselves. Mm -hmm. So what cameras do you have? That also could play into your cabling, as we just said. Yeah. Now, we've got this cool one here. This is a NDI uh, PTZ or yeah. PTZ. PTZ. As we call them here in Canada. <laughs> now, uh, this one will allow you to tap into your Ethernet network. Right. You can go right over the network that's at the venue, maybe an ad hoc network mm -hmm. that you've set up. Because you can include like a... Like, I've used HDMI to Ethernet converters before, yes. and that allows you. But then you've got extra hardware, extra fail exactly. points. So yes. these guys are great. And then you can, of course, use that with uh, in combination with the control board. Yes. So this guy allows you to do your pan, your tilt, your zoom. Change you different presets. switching on there. It's actually kind of cool. So that it's can help. Like nice and, and with these PTZ controllers, you can chain a bunch of cameras together mm -hmm. and control a number of PTZ cameras from one control board, That's right. which is handy. That's right. If maybe it's a particularly large venue, uh, I'm not sure which this one is um, in terms of zoom capability, um, but I'm going to guess it's probably a 12. Oh, like, like a 12 that. times? So. Yeah, something like that. And you might have some digital zooming capabilities right. too, but then you start to lose the quality. But if you're way in the back, mm -hmm. so then you want to get serious. Uh, this is a 70 to 200, and that's just mounted onto our uh, Sony A6300. So this one is a great camera to have, or a great example of a camera to have if you're way at the back of the venue, which you really should be for these kinds of events. That way you're not, um, you're not right in front. You've got a wider yeah. field of view. You can get that wide shot, and then you can also crash right in, yeah. get those close-up shots of the performers, your speaker, you know, maybe there's some presentations that are up on the stage. And that's, uh, you know, a great example of a lens combination that you can use for exactly. that. Exactly. So Kim Sorensen was just throwing a question here that happened to catch my eye, and that was because we didn't mention Ethernet cable length. Um, Cat5 spec, official spec, is about 100 meters, 350 feet, give or take, mm -hmm. somewhere in that ballpark. You can do longer with Ethernet, but um, definitely want to make sure... Right? Well, you can use switches to boost yep. along the way, um, just to add extra power boost. Um, you know, so it's it depends. Obviously, the higher quality of the cable, if they're, for example, if you're buying plenum shielded cable, you can, you know, so on and so on. You can find specs on any cable standard easily, obviously, on Wikipedia, and I do recommend looking those up when you're making those choices, um, because yeah, there's. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of different options out there. Mm -hmm. However, what you were saying about using an Ethernet extender, you could use like 50 foot ether HDMI from your camera to the first box, Ethernet to the next box, 300 feet, and then another 50 feet out. To, yeah. So there's ways of playing with that. But you will start um, to see some signal degradation yeah, there. But you, wanna, you could start to careful. run into some sync issues as well if you've got yeah. too much in between you and the camera. Exactly. Now, of exactly. course, when you have a camera, you're going to have to have an operator. So if you don't have one of these handy gadgets right. with this controller, you're not going with the PTZ unit. in the controller. You're going with the with the manual with your exactly. Sony A7. So yeah. you'll have to put a person on that. You're going to have a camera exactly. operator. That camera operator, you're going to have to have some kind of communication with them. Exactly. So that they can talk to you. You can tell them where to direct the camera. You can't just be yelling across the venue, hey, Matt, aim at the other guy, exactly. right? Like, that's not very yeah. efficient. So sometimes, and you see this a lot in big professional setups, equip your operators with two-way radios. Mm -hmm. ideally, and that's yeah, exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Ideally with an earbud so everyone can hear what's going on, make sure everyone knows what's happening and, and they're coordinated. I was at um, the uh, Senators so. game a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, four weeks ago maybe. And I obviously say, they haven't been playing yeah. hockey in a while. <laughs> <laughs> it was a while ago. I think it was one of like the last games. all season. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that was a little harsh. No, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, not, not at all. But um, one of the operators was just right in front of us. We actually had uh, different seats than our usual seats, and so we were pretty close to the glass. And you could see him talking back and forth, and he's following the direction from the producer in the back studio, and, Ooh, yeah. and obviously you need to have that connectivity. Yeah, definitely. Now, we talk about video. You can't have video without. Well, the m more importantly, as we've said on shows previous, you know, people can forgive somewhat sketchy video, but audio, mm -hmm. as we learned last week, uh, audio is more important. <laughs> and so Movie. that Movie can introduce bigger challenges than even video can because a large venue doesn't work so great uh, with different audio options. 
Um, sometimes you're using a shotgun, like we attempted uh, yesterday, last week for our. Uh, it our, was it was a reach. Yeah, that was quiz that was show. A reach. Didn't really pan out very well. Mix of quiet voices with mm -hmm. the shotgun not perfectly. Boy, the shotgun. I was mic'd. Yeah. Your lab exactly. was turned off. It was. Uh, yeah. It was a good. It was a good lesson. It was a good lesson. At the same time, if you're using labs, you're probably using wireless labs like we mm -hmm. are right now. Um, we're using these Sennheiser ones. Mm -hmm. um, but guess what? This is wireless technology. Guess what? Doesn't work so great in big venues with lots of wireless interference. Yeah. Well, we learned that so, at NAB. Um, yeah. Our uh, our contest winner Zoe, she was helping us record a segment, and we weren't even very far away. I think no. it was like thirty or forty feet. Maybe? Thirty, yeah, it was about yeah. 30, 25, so 30 feet. We're very far away, and I've got Zoe on the other side, and and, and you and I were like, just talking, and she's you. just like nothing. Eh, kind of give me the same yeah. shot. She texted me. She was very smart. Instead of just making what I would have done with because thing. we didn't have two way radios. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She just pulled out we her phone phones and sent me a text. And like, very hey, yeah, we can't. It's just crackling and breaking up. Exactly. So again, testing that kind of thing when the venue is hot. That's mm. the big thing. Because again, pre-testing it is great, but if you were stretching it to the limits during your pre-test, it's going to be less once things are hot. So I wonder if um, there's a tool that you could use for that to simulate like a lot of interference, right? Without breaking it's like hard any because FCC everything rules. operates on different frequencies, yeah. right? You'd have to so, have a jammer or something. Yeah, right? and, and the not really a good idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course the other thing is Often you want to bring your own audio if you can, mm -hmm. um, because that's equipment you know. So, for example, if you bring your little pocket mixer uh, like this one, it doesn't exactly fit in a pocket, but you know you might be super well, familiar pockets, with so. this mixer versus a different model. And again, we've run into it sometimes when you know Lisa's been away or Matt's not here to do our audio check, and someone else jumps in and they look at our audio board here in the studio and they go. I don't even know what I'm doing with this thing. I'm they start not turning just, knobs on Exactly, there. and then that just can cause mess it all a lot up. of mess. So equipment that you know and understand um, is, is very good. The other one would be sync. Um, we, we have an episode way back talking about uh, audio video sync. Uh, we even made our own video that we put out there uh, to help people test their sync mm -hmm. and, and to adjust. So that's always something to do as well. Test your audio video sync, whether it's just the clap test or, or you know something along well, those and lines. Well, the clap test is, is good for when you're syncing multiple cameras in yeah. post. But if you want to do it live, you need to have something that's going to be boop, boop, yeah. boop, and repeating like that uh, like that video that uh, was put together previously. You can get close with just getting people to do their sound check and mm -hmm. watching for the lip sync. But even then, you know things can drift yep. depending on the equipment you're using. So. Double checking and triple checking that stuff is always always important. That's actually something that we should check because I don't think I've looked at that since we I haven't looked at it in a while. Yeah. But um, since we stopped running our audio through the camera, we never really ran into mm. too many options. Again, it's a consideration to make. Um, our Canon C100 Mark II, great camera, but when you run audio through it, HDMI out to your encoder, the camera breaks the audio sync by about 90 milliseconds yep. over that embedded HDMI. So we know from experience that if we were running labs through that camera, we then have to go into our encoder, Pearl usually in our case, yeah. which has delay adjustments. We can add that 90 to 100 millisecond delay adjustment to compensate. Um, so again, knowing your equipment is a big benefit. Mm -hmm. I don't think we ran into any issues with your A7 though. I've had issues with the A7 okay. using a Blackmagic encoder. Wow. I mean, so I, I, when I was starting out and uh, starting <laughs> to introduce my clients to doing live streaming, right away it was like this sync issue, and I couldn't figure it out. And the tools within OBS are there, but it's kind of hard to just go in and find it easily, right? Because exactly. OBS is a pretty complex program. And yeah. it was entirely because of that encoding bit. Yeah. So the video and the audio, they were coming in sync into the box. But actually, having a problem coming back out as it was being processed. Yeah. And so that was a hardware issue, but uh, obviously those days are, are long gone. Exactly. But uh, but yeah, the A7 last week was fine. Yeah. So it's a good uh, good example of that. So we get all that stuff set up. We know our venue. We know our internet connectivity. We know our power. We know our camera setup and how we're going to route signals. We know our audio. Now we've got to configure all the settings. Yeah, now you right. actually have to <laughs> get to work. So now we're back to the beginning of we know our network, so we know what we're capable of, and that's going to be the basis of our encoding settings and knowing you know, how we're going to push it. You definitely want to run some tests, especially if you're borrowing hotel internet. 
they might have a firewall that's going to block traffic. Yep. Um, and so you might need to make sure you have a backup plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but test, double check it, um, and, yeah, and make sure it's going to work. Even be able to get out to the internet. Right, like you've got a great internal intranet, but once you yep. want to get out and connect, then you're blocked, or maybe that limit, or that's uh, you're limited when you get out. Too. Well, not all internet traffic is created the same. Right, mm. there are ports uh, for those of you who don't know, and typical internet traffic in your browser, which is 99% of what people are doing, uses port 80 for HTTP traffic, no problem, uh, or other ports for HTTPS, but. Those are usually unblocked and not an issue on mm -hmm. pretty much any scenario because they're 99% of traffic. But live streaming is different. It uses different ports. And if it's a location where they're using a particularly restrictive firewall, they might be blocking even outbound ports, which is weird, but it happens. Mm -hmm. Blocking outbound ports on non-HTTP related traffic find out by testing, and then find the right person to yell at. Um, <laughs> or use your backup plan. Or ask nicely. Or just yell. Or just yell. <laughs> now, obviously, if you're going to be using one of our encoders or one of our systems, you're going to get all those layouts set up in advance. So go through, make all your layouts, figure out what your cameras are going to be named, yep. right? So you want to get in there and remember, oh, what was HDMI A? Yeah. What was HDMI B? And you're flipping back and forth trying to figure out which camera it was. So labeling is very important, getting those layouts set yep. up. Uh, obviously, before the show each week, I get our new blue yep. title set up. So that's something that's not being done on the fly. That's being done so, well in advance. Right. And in our case, when we're using the Perl 2, um, you can custom label your encoding channels, your inputs, mm -hmm. your layouts. All of that can be custom labeled in the web browser-based UI so that you can keep it all logically straight and organized. Totally. If you're using a physical video switcher, I mean, little pieces of tape and yeah. stickies, right? Is, is well, our, our mixing is board help. is labeled along the bottom, exactly. so we have all of our inputs. And audio mixers always leave a space for that. Yeah, totally. So uh, you can easily do that. Yeah, don't use a permanent marker and put it right on the board like a knucklehead. Exactly. Put some white gaffer tape on there and use that so you can pull it off later. Yeah. Uh, obviously, with some of the video switchers that we've seen, they are color coded, so if you're not color blind, then you can actually figure out what Hopefully. those colors are and how they're associated. Hopefully. I know I would struggle with that between like the red <laughs> and green buttons, but uh, yeah. yeah, that's a whole other deal. Exactly. And then, of course, at your earliest convenience, once you know everything's actually going to work, create the stream pages, the events on mm -hmm. YouTube, Facebook, whatever you're going to use, and promote the heck out of it yep. as soon as possible and keep promoting it until the very last minute. Totally. Um, you want to remind people over and over again. The sooner you can get the word out, the sooner people are going to click that, you know, I'm interested on Facebook or remind me uh, on YouTube or whatever the case may be. But then repeating that in case they didn't do it the first time, to keep it fresh. Um, Unless so you're promoting doing a stream for like an underground political society and they don't want to promote it, then Then it's what's very, the point yeah. of streaming it? <laughs> if you're streaming it, promote it, right? I mean, you're never going to reach 100 million viewers uh, if you don't promote it. Unless so. you have 100 million viewers that don't want to be known. Well, I mean, promote in the right circle. Is that a paper straw on there? It is paper straw. Ah, it's A&W, bud. You find it gets mushy towards the end? I, I always do. find the paper yeah, straw gets kind of mushy. That's totally off topic. Uh, well, you're <laughs> drinking right in front of me. How am I not going to get distracted by that? here. But uh, that's a good segue to take us to our next number six topic. Number six. Test, test, test. Test, do they test, test, test. Those uh, paper straws. Do they have a? Um, bunch well, of they do. I think there's like the a, a minimum MTBF for paper straws. What mean is MTBF? Meantime before failure. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a term for all electronics. <laughs> Everything has an MTBF estimated or proven. But anyway. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did not know that. Yeah. And, and basically it breaks down <laughs> to, uh, you know, how long it takes before something falls apart. Cool. But anyway, testing. You got to test. You got to test right. everything. Test it thoroughly. Test mm -hmm. it again. Test it a third time. Yep. Test it and then get Lisa to test it and then get Matt to come exactly. over and test it. George is going to test it. Second pair of eyes, third pair of eyes, mm -hmm. whatever you have on hand just to verify the work and make sure it's there. Well, because I find often that you know I see what I want to see. It might be a typo right? in a stream key. Yeah, like exactly. It could be whatever, right? When you're hammering through a thousand things, one person might slip up. Mm -hmm. The best way to make sure that doesn't happen is, unfortunately, to duplicate the work, but someone will catch something, right? Yep. Um, that's why you have proofreaders when you write something. This is no different. Uh, you got to have it there. Well, so. and oftentimes, uh, to be honest, any time that we've dropped the ball or I've dropped the ball on the show is because I've rushed something and I haven't yeah. tested it and I didn't get another set yeah. of eyes on it. And let's be so. totally fair, right? Our note right here is do not expect to go into the venue an hour before and have everything run smoothly. Yeah. It's the big note here, like in bold that Cameron wrote out. I'm going to be totally honest. That was this show last week. Yep. 
I rolled into the show two minutes before we went. <laughs> I had not looked at the setup. I had no. I didn't even know what we were doing. The topic, the game show. But anything. you were setting it up way shorter than we normally oh, do. Oh yeah, it was. It and was a photo finish for it sure. It led to all those problems you guys saw, whether it was audio or just chaos or whatever. You know, that's what happens, and you don't want that. No. Ideally, we don't want to see that. Not on our show, and not on your show. Exactly. So. Philip actually uh, put it a really good way. We were helping the small rig guys at NAB yeah. a couple of weeks ago, and he was getting kind of like not Philip, but our the guy we were helping he was getting a little bit stressed out. You know, it was last minute things are kind of working, but there's a few gaps still. It's the first time they'd ever done that, and Philip said, "You know, if you're not yourself within that last hour before the show, yeah, you're not doing it right." No, exactly. Right, because you need to be nervous. Uh, today yeah. was actually an exception. I was at my desk about 40 minutes ago. Yeah, chilling I out. mean, yeah, but, today uh, was okay. Today was yeah, okay. Today was okay. But if yeah. you're not freaking out an hour before your show, that means that you're not you're not worried enough, and you well, should be worried because it's live. You've you've done it enough, or <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, um, yeah. So test, test, test. Yeah. Uh, make sure it goes smooth. And then finally, step seven um, is going live. So you guys have seen that. Sometimes, and this definitely helped us out a lot last week as well, is having some sort of placeholder pre-roll. Mm -hmm. Even during that Red Hot Chili Peppers concert, they had like a 20, 30, 40 minute placeholder pre-roll sitting there before they actually took the stage. Now, well, I you mean, sent me a message, like, the Chili Peppers are live. live. And you're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. like, come back later. Now, admittedly, no, that's a concert. No one ever takes the stage on time at a concert, no matter yeah. whether it's being live streamed or not. Did they have an opening act? No. No, oh, okay, no. so that would be where the um, opening act Exactly. Would be, I guess, the right? opening act is your pre-roll, right? Mm. So, but in a live stream case, whether it's just a static graphic or semi-transparent like we do, yep. of maybe a wide shot so people can see some stuff happening. Well, and I like the semi-transparent because then you get to see that there's exactly. actually something going on. But there's on. no mics. Yeah, there's no mics. <laughs> Unless we've got the audio layout. So you don't hear all the up, nasty but, uh, things Cameron and I are yelling at each other <laughs> while we're getting <laughs> exactly. ready. Um, oh, man. You know, the tissue. You can see me wiping my eyes, though. <laughs> tissue papers are But last out. week, we held that slide up for probably two, three minutes mm -hmm. than we, longer than we ever normally would because we just weren't ready. Yeah. I mean, it was just that simple. We yeah. just weren't ready. Um, and so buying us a little bit of time. But we can get the live stream going. Mm -hmm. We can start getting our chat from all you guys. And well, and, we and arguably as well, you can also use that as a tool to get your engagement going. Yeah. Because not everybody's going to be ready right at three o'clock. You know, we're kind of like exactly. We're uh, almost a generation away from when we used to sit down and wait for a show to start because it started at a certain time, right? Exactly. And, you know, we're kind of not used to that anymore. Where everything's available anytime you want it. All this content, you turn it on, it's ready to go. So it's a uh, it's a little bit of a yeah. departure from that. Exactly, exactly. Now, of course, once you get the uh, once you get that stream going, you've got that graphic down, you're live. Make sure that someone's actually monitoring your stream, Absolutely. right? Like I could do this, I could set it up, and then I could walk over here, and you right. and I could blabber on for an hour. But if it dropped, but we drop, we'd have no idea. So Lisa right now is constantly. Mo oh yeah, now she's actually looking as I said it. <laughs> Puts down her cell phone. I mean, oh, yeah, right. In our case, we also happen to be looking at our chat. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have someone also monitoring chat, whether it's for engagement, answering questions, but the viewers are going to be the first people to know a technical glitch. And they will let you know. If you have live chat active, they'll let you know. You guys have let us know, and we appreciate it. We really do. And, you know, so having someone just keeping an eye on that, they're going to get that flag. You know, audio's messed up, videos. Crazy, you know, we're dropping, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the case may be. So, well, and it's having, good to have a, that. having like an actual line of communication, right? Like, we're watching our chat, and, uh, you know, I've got Skype open just in case if exactly. anybody on the marketing team sees something. Yeah. Uh, Lisa and I have a visual line of sight so that we can, um, you know, she can commu communicate to me. Exactly. Usually she does this like yeah. <laughs> signal so I know that things aren't exactly. going well. But, uh, but yeah. Oh, and actually, this is a good point from Tim Trot. There's um, a bunch of great points in here. Not all of them are specifically questions, but everyone's just showing, sharing their own tips and tricks in here, which is great. Um, so we'll hit a couple of those. Yeah, I was going to throw Tim's up. I'm just going to dump our other graphic back down first. But uh, this is something that we used to do, and we should probably bring it back again because it is a nice way to lead in. And, uh, you know, you've got your graphic up, turn down the sound, and put on a licensed music track. Yeah. Right, you don't want to use a, a non-licensed No, you don't, because that's one way to make sure your <laughs> live stream is exactly. going to get dropped before you even start. It's going to shut down before you even get going. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, and there's always changes to those algorithms. So mm -hmm. one something you got away with once might not be 
the case again, so make sure it's totally you know, royalty. And that stuff. little bit of that little bit of pre-roll, like we start our stream before the show actually starts, and then we go live once we're ready. But uh, that the pre -roll, varies by platform. Yeah, exactly. It does but vary by platform. So you know, having that pre-roll going also lets you have that extra minute yeah. just to make sure that it's actually well. Working. Exactly. And and Mike highlighted the exact same thing. You know, make sure the video is moving in your pre-show mm -hmm. again for that one because it keeps people interested. They want to know what's going on. But it also means the person monitoring knows, hey, this is actually live. It's not just a stuck frame. Yeah, totally. I would love to see, like, uh, you know, in the future, having a countdown timer, yeah. you know, something like that, where we could actually count down. Again, Facebook starts automatically. YouTube, we have to manage. There's a counter start until a minute, and then it disappears, and mm -hmm. you sit there guessing. Well, it's uh, part of our graphic, though, right? Like, it's something that exactly. we actually use. Uh, our friends over at uh, Video Guys, what they do is they like to have a little pre-game chat yeah. before the show starts. So they make sure that everything's working. They'll you know, they talk about sports. They talk to the guests. They kind of make sure the levels are good. And then once they have enough exactly. engagement, then they kick on their, their stinger graphic and they're good yeah. to go. And, and I've watched some live streams myself where they actually do a side host. They'll have a sideshow person just welcoming people, doing the chat shout outs, doing that stuff, and then they cut over to the main show. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of ways of doing that, that pre-show, um, you know, depending on the size of the operation. I would say if I was doing a large venue convention kind of thing, I might try and have a, a floor reporter as my pre-show. Yeah, um, totally. And then cut over to the main piece. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice nice way of showing the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that could be a good like one. They could be roaming the floor, talking to folks. Actually, that was something we didn't really cover when we were talking about cameras. Uh, we've got our static positions, but having a roaming camera has a huge amount of value as well. Right? You've got a wireless yeah. connection there. It's going to be a little bit trickier. Maybe you're using a TerraDeck uh, bolt link. Maybe you've got like a, just a super long HDMI cable, and they're in an area that yeah. they can move back and forth that no one else is in. But it is a, it is a good exactly. way to have that other angle. Tim makes another great point here, uh, is that YouTube and some other platforms, if they start losing data from audio, for example, they might mm. just assume that you've dropped all together and okay. just drop your stream. Uh, we have never had that happen. But we usually have only those quiet periods at the very beginning and the very end. Yeah, that's true. But if you do it in the middle, that's where things might mm -hmm. get a little risky. I'd like um, to know what the gates so are for that, because obviously the, you, know, you should have at least like 10, 15, 30 seconds, a You'd few think, minutes. But right? it's one of those hidden things on YouTube that no one wants to, <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody wants to admit. Um, it's just some guy in the back that's like arbitrarily deciding his exactly. Things. Zuckerberg exactly. Zuckerberg is like his console. And uh, Tim being uh, nice and honest there. Um, you Sorry, know. that one bounced back off. What was yeah. that comment? Yeah, <laughs> saying probably made every mistake there is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, exactly. And it's one of the reasons we do this show is one go. way to, to mm -hmm. know what those errors might be is to uh, is to make them, right? Well, and, and Tim has been in the industry for a long time. And anyone that's worked in this industry will tell you, if you admit no fault, then again, you're not working hard enough or you're just not being honest with yourself, exactly. right? Because you make these mistakes, you learn from them, you move on, you cry, drink a, <laughs> drink a six pack, move on, get over it. Uh, Tim, let's work on a, a logo on Facebook that's not blue. <laughs> or your YouTube, YouTube one, just on, yeah. a, on a side yeah. note. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, I was just going back through here. Danny Grizzle had another great one. Uh, best tip ever from Epifan, put streaming gear in a VLAN with dedicated bandwidth. Yeah, and we do that. Um, the network drop that we have here in our studio space in the office is on a dedicated VLAN with a dedicated chunk of bandwidth up to the theoretical maximum we might use. And that includes if we decided one day that we were going to do another 4K live stream to YouTube, we made sure that the dedicated bandwidth is big enough to do that. Um, and so, so we can do a 360 uh, show, for example. You know, we might have to get a 360 camera from our friends mm -hmm. over at 360. Yeah, Insta 360. Yeah. Are you so, listening? Uh, you know, if you're listening, call us up again. All right. Now, uh, what's the last thing? So we've got our stream up. We're monitoring it. Now, this is something that we do every week. We actually incorporate a an end slide or an end layout. Yeah. That's our thanks for watching, and we kind of have our little exactly. our little post game. You, you know, know we, um, it, you want to let it play out a bit, mm -hmm. and I think sometimes. Um, you can let that play out longer than even we do sometimes, mm -hmm. um, just because it lets people wind down, lets people get the final questions in the comments. Totally. Um, and well, yeah, and, and for us on YouTube, what Lisa will do is she adds our cards at the end. Exactly. So the longer that we have as our post roll, then we have Get more time to put the cards up, exactly. check out other videos, yeah. and all this stuff you can take right out. We take out the we take out the pre roll at the beginning of the episode. We take out a little bit of the uh, the post roll at the end, 
and that way we can clean it up and make it a little bit tighter for our VOD guys that exactly. are watching later. Exactly. Actually, this kind of triggered something. <laughs> David Larson was saying, uh, you know, he uses masking tape on the mixer and labeling everything. But I was going to point out another one of the best friends that you should definitely have with you is rolls and rolls of gaff tape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds, you know, like such a basic thing, but you're going to have so many cables, everything, and you need to tape that stuff down. Yep. The last thing you need is um, someone to trip over. Now, I'm not the most crazy safety guy, but there are times when you need to tape things down. Well, you don't have to tape every inch, but you have a high traffic right. spot, you know, throw some tape on it. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing a lot of events, I'd recommend investing in maybe some rubber mats if you know that anyone's going to be rolling carts yeah. over it, if you have some fragile cables like the fiber cables too. Uh, we're actually looking at a really cool product that's just a roll of Velcro. So yeah. if you have like the hook and loop carpet like we have in the office here, yeah. then you can just roll it right over that and then you can exactly. pull it back up again, use it again. Yeah. Um, obviously, I would recommend knowing how to use gaffer tape before you start <laughs> taping everything down. And hockey tape is not the same as gaffer no. tape. No, so the beauty It looks the same, but you're going to ruin it's not all of your cables. The nice part about gaff tape, guys, is that it's a very actually low adhesive. It's so the low it tap. Doesn't, yeah. It doesn't leave residue behind. That's really important. You don't want to use duct tape. You don't want to use hockey tape. Or gun tape, that, you know, gun yeah, tape, like you, tape. You don't want it. You don't want to mess with that. You don't want to use electrical tape, the stickiest crap on earth. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. You want gaff tape because it's not going to make a mess. I'm still um, cleaning off so cables that were, that I mean, yeah. use that like cheap and even cheaper gaffer tape too because you might find a good deal on Uline or exactly. or BNH or whatever but just get like, pay a little bit more money. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa's laughing. All, All right. right. So well, enough about gaff tape. Uh, yeah, well I think it's just enough in <laughs> general. Trying to put some over our mouths. Exactly. Um, so, there's been great chat there, guys. A lot mm. of back and forth, a lot of tips shared from all of the uh, experts in the chat, which is awesome to see. Really appreciate it. Um, but the general thing is with these tips, everyone's live streaming. There's no reason you can't. And following a lot of these tips that we've talked about and that some of the links we'll throw in there, you know, you get these points down, those golden rules, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be successful. Absolutely. And hopefully, one of you will hit 100 million <laughs> concurrent viewers. Maybe it'll be us, but I doubt it. I want to get one of those gold plaques, even the silver plaque. Oof, you know? Yeah, well, we got a long way to go for that. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. Uh, next week, the episode is not quite determined yet. We're just waiting no. on an email back to see if we can do this, uh, the specific episode that I was planning on. But uh, keep, a look, yeah. uh, keep an eye on our socials. And, of course, all the information that we covered in our episode today will yeah. be posted as a blog post, I think, later this week if it hasn't already gone up yeah. already. Next week is looking crazy busy. Mm -hmm. I should be here. Eh, yeah, we'll right see. here you might just not. We'll I was see. worried you weren't going to come in this week. We were just going to get know. like a condolences letter from your <laughs> yeah, family pretty much. or something. That was a little rough earlier. A little bit rough. All right. Still am, but you know. Well, thank you very much again, and we'll see you next week at 3 o'clock for episode 110, live at Epifan. And no, we don't want to be PewDiePie, David. <laughs> <laughs>